for another episode of Community and Voices today. We got two very special guests. We got Malik and his lovely wife, Cece, with us today. What's up, guys? How you feeling? Good. How you doing? Doing well. Thank you. So, yeah, let's jump right into it. Um, so, Malik, tell us about how, you know, just your experiences growing up in Alabama. Um, I mean, growing up in Alabama, I guess it, it could be summed up in, you know, a few different ways. Mm -hmm. Uh and I really, I feel like, learned the differences when I was able to move away. Um, but growing up in Alabama, I feel like it's, it's, it progresses, I feel like, slow. You know what I mean? Um, and you you see that, like, as we live in Denver now, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of different things. And um, I guess you, you grow up really trying to figure out, like, where... Where do you you fit into? I mean, because you think of because we live in Lower Alabama, and like you said, things are still a little bit conservative, and right. it's like, and and you grow up and you wonder why you know you treated a certain way, you know what I'm saying? Because of you know color and stuff like that, and you know you're a little kid growing up and you right. thinking about these things and and. Your parents try to explain it to you and and it, it really I feel like it's it's a combination of those type of things and people don't really realize you know what the type of impact on that it has on you you know while you're younger but um it's, it's, it's really more to it than that um I grew up and I had you know two great parents that really, I, I guess, would, you know, try to keep me on the right path and, you know, keep yeah. me out of trouble and kept me in sports um, earlier on. And I feel like it really helped me. And I, I was pretty good in school as well, you know, which was another route, you know, that kind of, you know, helped me while I was younger too. Yeah. And it really, in sports, I feel like it taught me a lot, you know what I mean? In terms of, you know, working hard and, and, just those those little nuances, leadership skills, um, how to work well with others, and and really, I feel like it has parlayed into you know the person I am today. You know, what I'm saying those little things that you learn on the way from whether it's from high school and college and um, up until now. You know what I mean? And I really felt like you know I grew a lot while I was with you know my parents in Alabama but I grew a lot you know when I had a chance to go off to to college as well you know what I'm saying and, and gain that that independence you know that individuality mm -hmm. and uh really helped me grow up I feel like as a man and as a person and and uh it's really it's really became a part of who I am you know the man I am and the person I am today for sure and I I know what you're talking about when you say like growing up in Alabama it was kind of slow Cause like I grew up in New York and it's like pretty fast and mm -hmm. diversity is just like night and day compared to like Alabama and always wonder like how it is growing up in the South, specifically more like the deep South, where it's like, you know, how you mentioned when you're a kid and like, you don't know, but like people are looking at you a certain way or treating you different just because of like, you know, the color of your skin. And as a kid, you don't really realize that until you grow up and how that stuff was really deeply rooted in the deep South. So and now you know, you're an adult now, but the college, you know, it's a separate career and you just kind of understand like the nuances of all that. So definitely relate with you when it comes to that, you know? Yeah. yeah. So okay. now you're in Denver. So tell me about some issues you see in Denver now. Um, issues in Denver. I feel like the first thing you, you hear about and like with Denver and things going on is like the, really like guns, like gun violence, like people, you know, getting shot and and yeah. uh, uh, what happened in the movie theater and, mm -hmm. you know, Royal Mall being a, a bad area where, you know, you hear of a lot of shootings going around. Aurora in general, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. A tough area to live in and, and so many things going on. So it's like, um, that's, that's I feel like that's one of the, the biggest things that I, I have seen and heard about, you know, since yeah. being here and and uh, I think, and even we got a chance to, I think the police chief who had got newly elected, you know, in Aurora had came and talked to us. A few of the police chiefs had came and talked to us um, when we had a meeting and it was just like talking about, cause this was, I think this was around the time last year um, that George Floyd around that time. And yeah. uh, 
I guess they wanted to get them to come in and, you know, us be able to ask them questions and them talk about things that they're trying to implement and put in place, you know, to to combat, you know, gun violence and all the things that was going on, police brutality and, yeah. you know, social justice movement and, and things like that. So um, that's I feel like that's a big part of, of what's going on now that I've been able to see. Yeah, for sure. And even like me moving here and now I'm just like, oh, Aurora, and then you see like, I want to say every other month or something, but anytime like you mention some type of gun violence or anything of the sort is always up in Aurora. I'm like, damn, that's right there. Just like with the gun violence mm-hmm. stuff. I remember during the summer, like there was an active shooting in one of the supermarkets in Boulder. So it was just like, you know, it's crazy, but you know, one of those things you got to deal with, especially in this country today, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. So tell us about, you know, with this episode, well, each episode of Community Voices, we make a donation to a charity of your choice. So tell us about, you know, the organization you chose and your connection to it. I'm going um, to piggyback a little bit off of my wife because she, yeah. she had, a, I feel like, a big hand in mm-hmm. you know, finding this organization. And and uh, I think it's been an organization that she has learned a lot about and had a chance to talk to, you know, people that's involved in it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm going um, okay. to piggyback off <laughs> of her. <laughs> okay, Team Reed, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically with this organization, um, there's, I, I go to this gym called 212 Gym here, um, kind of like Centennial. And um, one day my trainer, his name's Kendrick, he had um, this like event for 212 and they had like a lot of vendors and people were coming out. And I walked in and I saw Miss Heather and uh, she's over with Safe House and Denver. And um, we locked eyes and I just like kind of made my way over there and she started telling me all about it. And it hit so, it hit really hard because um, I feel like most people can say they know someone, whether it's a friend or relative or even just someone you might meet. I've met people who've been in like abusive relationships um, in stores and they've told me about it. Um, I have friends and family that have been in that situation also and they're survivors. I've heard so many stories. And so um, talking to her really hit home with me. It was like, wow, like you guys are not just out here just talking to people. You guys are providing like a safe place, an actual safe yeah. place for them. Um, and it was just so beautiful because you just really, naturally you don't know what people are going through, right? Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, you know so many, I think the stats said like one in three, more than one in three, yeah. people are like um, either exposed or in relationships that are abusive. I mean, you think about that, that's a that's crazy a yeah. number, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so just for them to be such a blessing, so available to be willing to help people who, who need them. And I know um, in talking to her, she told me that people would come, they would use the donations, people would be able to stay um, and they would actually help them like get on their feet. They would like help them try to get jobs in their house, not just the victim, but like the kids, cause they're victim too, you know, in this situation, not just the, the actual like adult, but just whomever, um, they'll house them, they'll take care of them. They're very safe. Like they, you can't even call them. One day I actually, I was trying to like talk to her about this mm-hmm. and I tried to call and I was like, it's Heather there. They're like, we can't tell you that. And I was like, oh. <laughs> You know, but that's good for them. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But it, it's just, it's so beautiful just that they have their purpose. Like they live their life to serve these these victims. And I just think that's just so amazing. So that's why I chose just thinking about all the people we know, yeah, um, yeah. all the things we've heard. I just thought it was just, it's just so amazing. I don't know. Yeah. It's just, it's beautiful. And too, right. like, like you said, domestic violence, how prevalent it is like when yes. she when we were talking about it and you know you see those type of numbers like you don't realize how yeah. prevalent that is like in our everyday you know things yeah. that's going on and you know just taking that, that step back to to think about you know what people are going through and and how it is affecting you know um a wide, a wide range of people like because it could be you know white black like so many different people are getting affected by this like not just one certain group yeah. of people and you know and to realize how important it is to you know be available you know to mm-hmm. to like you said the survivors and um victims that that's been involved in these type of relationships i feel like it speaks volumes and i'm glad you know we were able to you know choose them and come mm-hmm. to you know, an agreement on being able to help them in this way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it makes perfect sense too, especially you never know what people are going through. And like that statistic you said, one in three, like that's you 
going outside and just counting three people. One of them three people, they going through it in their relationship at home. So, right. you know, shout out to Safe House in Denver and making sure, you know, no pun, is a safe house for people who are going through these things and, you know, making right. sure they're feeling safe and secure as they, you know, navigate their relationship with like, you know, their significant other or whatever is going on in their household. So definitely kudos to both of you in choosing this uh, charity and we'll definitely, you know, handle that donation on our end. And we know it's going to go to great use because like you, you saw it firsthand and the work they're doing in the community. So, especially in the Denver it's area. so exciting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it just warms my heart just to think like, I think Kendrick, um, and then like raise like um I think a lower amount and she just explained all that they were able to do with just that amount. Yeah. So you just imagine, I don't know. It's just exciting. Right. Mm-hmm. And it makes me happy seeing your excitement too. So yeah. Yeah. And that shows like how genuine and like you know real the place of uh, the charity feel you feel about the charity. So yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So then how can people who are watching this uh conversation about us, how can they, you know, support Safe House? I think um, more than anything, just going to their website um, and just looking, because they're very, like, secure, you know, so I can't yeah. say, like, you can go or, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, just pull up. Just pull like, yeah. yeah, you can't pull up. But, yeah, just go to their website. Just try to inform yourself. Um, I think they have a lot of links uh, of resources that's on there. Um, and if you know anyone who might need help, whether – they are in Denver and I, they even might have re- like have resources on the website for just help in general. I know they have facts of like what to do, how to identify stuff like that. Um, so if there's anyone who might be going through it, or if you know someone going through it, maybe just go on there. Um, just try to be a blessing, try to help the best you can. Um, just educate yourself. And then if you feel the need to donate to your heart, definitely do so. Okay. It'll be changing someone's life for sure. Definitely, definitely. Cool. But um, yeah, that's a wrap for our conversation. You know, I'll let you guys have like the last word as far as like, you know, the same thing else you want to let the world know anything you guys want to be working on. Anybody you want to shout out, things like that. Uh, I'm going to shout out Kendrick at 212, <laughs> Kendrick Kennedy, because if it was not for him and his heart for the community, I would not have known about mm-hmm. Safe House. So I'm going to give him a big shout out. Um, and I always felt like one of my biggest thing is just like we're in this world and we're living, but just take those moments and the opportunity to just be a blessing to other people. I mean, you just think about how blessed we are. Don't take it for granted. You never know what people are going through. Everything is not just about us. So many things are just beyond us. And so I just think that's very important. Yeah. So. Definitely. Definitely. Uh, going off of what she said, uh, <laughs> definitely, uh, being a blessing. Like you said, we are, are in a position um, to, you know, be able to give back and be able to, you know, have connections to, you know, um, be able to help out, you know, in this way. And it's like really taking advantage of the opportunities because, you know, we present it with opportunities every day. Everybody's presented with opportunities. And I think it's all about, you know, what you do with them. And, Definitely. you know, yeah, when she, you know, told me about safe, safe place and uh, safe house, my yeah. bad, safe yeah. house. And, you know, all the things that they provide and, and the ways that they help, you know what I'm saying? It was... <laughs> No, it was no question about, you know, this is this is something we could do to make an impact, you know, not only here here, but just make an impact in the world, you know what I'm saying? In, in, right. in whatever way you can, uh, and continue to inspire others to do the same. Absolutely. Also shout out to Safe House. I just think that's important. <laughs> and Miss Heather, oh, you're so yeah. amazing. You're the best. Oh, yeah. such a blessing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And definitely you wanna be the uh, be the change you wanna see. So mm-hmm. and that's why like oh, yeah. conversations like this. So yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah, but that's and a wrap. Shout out to you guys. Thank you for I'm about to say yeah, shout, shout out to you guys. guys. <laughs> Almost, yeah, yeah, yeah. When you say shout out, you start thinking about all these different things. Right. But shout <laughs> out to you guys. such a blessing. This is awesome that you are doing this. Yeah, yeah. I was excited uh, when when she mentioned it and yeah. mentioned you know, the such ways that y'all blessing. continue, that y'all help. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And, uh, we definitely appreciate it. You know what I mean? And y'all should be celebrated as well. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Shout out to the team, and yeah, we've been doing this for like what seventy something episodes straight. So oh wow, so yeah, that's so good. Well, yeah, congratulations awesome. on that. Yeah, Thanks. Thanks. Cool, but yeah, that's a wrap. So CC and Malik, thank you guys so much for taking the time out, and yeah, that's about right. it. Thank <laughs> you for having yeah. us. Thank you, yeah, thank you for your time. Right. Yeah, thank you for having us on. Definitely, my pleasure. All right, see you. Good night. I have a good night.